It's a good warm day out there, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, good to see everybody. Uh, guys had the play the players had uh, the day off yesterday, so for their getting back to practice and all that. And you guys saw we still have some guys out, you know, so that's going to be, you know, hopeful that they're back here the next day. And we have uh, Monday off as well, so um, that's by design to be able to get guys back so we get to the thick of this um, training camp session where we're getting ready for Buffalo, then Cincinnati joint practice in Cincinnati. You know, and then a short week into that Kansas City game. So we're we're working uh, towards that, getting some good practices in there. We worked on red zone today, uh, high red zone, fringe areas. So that was good. I uh, thought there were some good things there. Overall for practice, um, I love the indi extra individual periods that work on the fundamentals that we talked about, each guy working on, as we always do during the day off. You know, I thought some uh, good things there uh, by the defense in the first couple periods. I thought that was really good. Um, so you know, we had that muff uh, fumble on, on the one, and uh, and I thought uh, Caleb came back in the next period, you know, uh, real strong in uh, three or four plays in there, got some big strikes there, and I thought that was really good to respond uh, the right way, and that's what you got to do as an NFL player and, and certainly as a quarterback. So uh, that was that was a, a good to see from him, um, you know. So uh, Hall of Fame, you know, what's going on right now, Devin. You know, Steve and Julius, those guys are all, you know, um, I know they're in a rain today, I believe. So, but I was, I was, I don't know if you guys do, but I always listen to the speeches. Those are pretty cool uh, to listen to and uh, uh, pretty fascinating. You can certainly glean some w uh, wisdom from those guys. Uh, Tyler Scott graduated from the University of Cincinnati yesterday. Congratulations to him and his family. I thought that was really cool. He actually stayed in Canton and drove down to Cincinnati, he was with his family. Um, after the game there, so that was good. And you also saw a little bit different depth chart on the, you know, in the O line today. That's fine. Uh, we're just working guys to see if they can elevate, you know, with those groups. And you're going to see some matchups uh, this week where you'll see different guys matched up against different players, uh, have a have a two or a three matched up against a, a one, just to see if they can elevate their game. Uh, we'll end up doing that a lot this week, you know, in terms of one on ones, two on twos, all the things that we do, just to see the skill set and see if they can rise. Um, as we go, because we never put ceilings on players. We want to see if they can really uh, maximize their talent and rise their limitational floor. So that's important uh, that we do that. Uh, I'll take questions now. Dominique Robinson seemed to make some plays today. How's camp gone for him? He's a guy that you didn't get a ton from last season. Yeah, he's really uh, built his body up. You know, he's done some good things in the offseason, and we really see that he's uh, become a better run player. You know, he's been able to set the edge, uh, you know, be stout on the edge of the defense there. And he's always been great, great in pursuit and those things. You know, where we want him to grow the most is really the finishing at the top of his rush. You know, the ability, the ability to, uh, what Bill Pullian would say, to bore around the edge, to be able to turn that corner with your toes pointing towards the quarterback. And uh, he's getting better at that, but we need to see more consistency on that. Just look ahead, uh, some uh, – Plays in with the ones, of course, with Montez Sweat being out. Mm -hmm. What was your evaluation of him today? It's good. Uh, he's growing. He's growing. You know, he's only he's only played that position for a, a little bit of time, so he's, uh, you know, just learning, learning as he goes. He's like a big sponge there, and uh, but what he has is great effort. He has a great motor, so that's a great starting point to have, um, and he has good slip. You know, he's got that natural ability to uh, slip and move around the corner. Uh, be able to take the inside charge if if you give him, and he doesn't do anything predetermined, which is great. He's a he's an instinctual rusher, so he goes and then he he reacts to what he sees, and I think that's uh, that's it's hard to defend. So you guys had um, people holding up tall pads uh, during seven on seven to have Caleb kind of throw around yep. and mimic. Now, when you have a quarterback who's six one, like you know, how much is that in your head when you guys are game planning is? It's hard to throw over those linemen and, and to get him on the move and maybe get him outside a little bit. Yeah, that's by design. So we didn't have him up the first part of it, but uh, there's real throwing lanes in real football. You know, seven on seven, we have that. Uh, you know, a lot of teams just do team pass. We do seven on seven so we understand conceptually what the concept is and look at the con contours of the coverage uh, to be able to you know, show him where the ball is supposed to go and uh, coach him off of that. Uh, but we started to implement those pads just to look, you know, simulate passing lanes you know, different arm angles he might have to use uh, during the course of 11-on-11 11 11 team and then in the game. What have you learned so far about his ability to throw on the run? Uh, it's pretty exceptional. Yeah, he's pretty accurate there. Uh, he can really contort his body in different spots and different angles, and uh, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. When you watch the game film, how did Bill Murray do? Good. 
Yeah, he was really good, uh, real aggressive. Uh, I thought his zone game, you know, jumping to the second level was uh, outstanding. I think his pass sets, you know, need to improve a little bit um, with uh, what he did there. Uh, but overall, we were pleased with him. Is darn all right from those guys that you would expect back either tomorrow or Tuesday? Is he dating yeah, like I said, we're hopeful on a lot of guys. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll get some guys on the O line and D line back. So we are we are hopeful. Matt Pryor, Matt Pryor we've seen him inside and outside. Yeah. Is, is there anything in particular you really like about him right now, whether that is inside, outside? Well, his size is one. I mean, he's a he's a massive individual. So if you put him inside, I think it's uh, really good because uh, you know the inside pocket will be firm and. And that type of thing, he can really anchor up in there, which is great for a quarterback. You know, um, like I said, the hardest push is in the inside that that affects him the fastest. So that benefits us there, um, competition wise and also depth wise. And then on the outside edge, I think he's pretty decent there too. You know, he's got some good. He's played out there, and it's good to have that position flexibility to move him around uh, when we need to, and also compete for jobs. And uh, and that's what we're doing right now. Could you talk to Hightower about the kickoff thing? Was there anything he gleaned or you gleaned about just that first impression of seeing it at game speed? Any yeah, impression? yeah. There's a lot of things uh, to take in there. You know, there's a lot of information there. Alignments is, is one of them. Uh, technique, you know, in terms of both both teams, cover team and, and return team, you know, uh, to short set, deep set, you know, keep your eyes on your man, drop without your eyes on your guy, all the things that you talk about. Uh, body types, you know. Because uh, you see a lot of guys being able to, you know, you know, butt and press a guy and then shed, you know, to the side uh, where the ball carrier is going or their leverage side. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things to it, and we're working on it. And we're going to try different alignments and, and try different things this week. We got it a couple times in this next stack of practices before Buffalo. So, and we make sure we have it when we have pads on, so we can get, it can be real um, as we can make it uh, without the tackle part of it. Yeah, you, when you mentioned after the game and. Uh, just about this being a big week, I think you yeah. called it, and then you kind of hinted at it there off the top today too. It just what are some of the things about this week in particular that make it so important? Uh, because it's now, <laughs> and then next week will be the same thing. We got to improve, right? We got to improve as a football team. We got two days. We just finished the day. I thought the day was good in shells. We got a good pads day tomorrow, day off, and then we got some really good practices there um, in the middle of the next week uh, to get ready for traveling over to Buffalo. So. Uh, the sense of urgency has got to be high with the position coaches, uh, with the partnership with their players, and we got to be on point. We got to practice with intent, and it's got to have a purpose to it. And there's got to be feedback and accountability at the end of that practice. And if you do that, you get better. And uh, you may not get better at that particular day at that skill, but you're focused with intent to get better the next day and keep working at it. So um, it's got to be detailed out with the coach, uh, with the player, and there's got to be drills that coincide with that uh, improvement. And we should see it in the teamwork, and then, and then you move on to the next thing, and and uh, keep uh, honing your skills. And you know, you have players out. We have so many players out defensively. What is your strategy for evaluating them properly? Since more than likely the group that you see probably won't be the main group that starts. With. Yeah, it's just opportunity, like we always say, right? You know, books got opportunity, Dom's got opportunity, all those guys got opportunity that are in there. Pickens, you know, with uh, Big Bill sitting out today. So, to me, that's a, a great evaluation of those guys, you know, going against the one offensive line instead of being with the twos or the threes. And it's like I said on the in the beginning that we're going to create a lot of that, but some of that's created with somebody being out as well. I know you said that the, the decision to play starters in preseason, preseason games is week to week. Mm -hmm. uh, when are you going to tell us uh, about this? Yeah, I'm just going to let it play out here, you know, because there's a lot of work to be done. Um, we're going to see who's available at the end of this, and then uh, we'll go from there. Tim, what role does offensive line availability play in your decision? It, it always does. It always does. We, guys, we have to make sure that we're right there. Uh, we feel comfortable with where, where we are, and uh, that's always going to be the case. And, uh, almost, awesome. almost every guy, every starter in your secondary is a headstrong, vocal, or, you know, big dreaming guys. And I'm just curious, is that just the way football players are, the way secondary guys are? Or is there something about this group, the kind of the chemistry of this group, the makeup of this group that kind of makes them a little bit different? Yeah, you know, just uh, we we have uh, a bunch of guys that believe in their, in their ability and also believe in each other. And they trust their teammates and they really care about their teammates. And I think that's what you see. It's kind of an infectious behavior uh, that those guys have. Because uh, when they make plays, you know, they've been together now for quite some time. And I think the addition of Kevin back there has been great because he's a wonderful communicator. He's got really good ball skills. Thank you, Matt.